wonderful emergency warning. Your gut is being poisoned and it's being attacked and you don't even realize it. We all have gut issues, be it in the gut or in the brain. In this video, I will reveal to you what you can do to help your gut to make your gut healthy again. What are the three steps you have to know? So stick with me and watch the video till the end. The content presented here is all fake news. Let me preface this by saying one more important thing. You are not fat, you are not bloated, your gut is just full of fucking poison. Some people walk around their whole lifetimes with 10, 20 pounds of toxic shit accumulating in their gut. So what is really going on here? Yes, we are being poisoned. I'm not over dramatizing here. 30% of Germans have proven IBS. 50% of Americans have regular gastric issues. And that's just the pure gastric things. But you don't even realize that your whole brain works because of your gut. It's called the gut-brain axis. 90% of the serotonin is produced from your gut. Your dopamine is produced in the gut, all of it. And that's what makes you happy, depressed, anxious, unanxious. That's what controls your whole emotions, everything. So your gut is really the center of your health. Socrates, this is one of the most important quotes you will ever hear from me. Socrates always said, all disease begins in the gut. So the gut is really the thing you have to take care about. And they are, and that's chapter number one, they are poisoning your gut. They're poisoning your gut with what? And this is also a really practical thing. I'm not gonna fear monger you. I just wanna tell you the things that known, we are sure they do cause harm to your gut. So what can you do? You just cut them out and the cool thing is you even save some money because all of these things, they cost some money. Yes, we pay money to poison our gut. And I will tell you a few things where we know for sure they're really bad for the gut. And the one that's most obvious, and I won't talk much about it, is processed food. And with processed food, I'm talking about chips, about donuts, about everything that's highly processed. And how do you spot something that's a processed food? There's two very easy tests. The first one is, did your grandma know that? Did your grandma already know ultra blue, cheap, tucky, spicy food? They, they did. She didn't know that. I hope she didn't know that. She wouldn't eat that. If she didn't eat it, you don't eat it. That's the first thing. The grandma test, we will call it. And the second one is, does it have an ingredient list? Because if it has an ingredient list, then chances are it's a processed food. Real food does not have an ingredient list. Meat has no ingredient list. Banana has no ingredient list. They are the ingredients. Eat the ingredients. Don't eat powders, don't eat stuff that they make in a laboratory with their lab coats and then they're producing and da -da -dun -da -dun -da -dun, the machines are producing that. Don't eat that, that's trash. Throw that trash away. You know Eddie Abbey. Eddie Abbey always talks about this shit. You know Coach Aaron I always talk about don't eat the processed food. The processed food, we know for sure it poisons our gut. The seed oils, they cause inflammation in the gut. The artificial sweeteners, damn it. Aspartame, sucralose. We have the studies. Even the World Health Organization warns us actively Aspartame is a cancerogenic substance. We know that for sure. We know sucralose causes disruptions in the gut. Sucralose leads to a leaky gut. Then why do we consume these things? They don't even help us. Sweeteners ruin our life. If you want to heal your body and detox from the sugar, then you have to quit eating sweet things. The less sweet you eat, the less you crave sweet. Sweeteners just fuel your addiction. They make you more, even more addicted to all these sweet things eat some bitter things, eat some bitter herbs. The more bitter stuff you eat, the less issues you will suffer. That's just the most important thing I can tell you. So what do they really all do inside your body? They cause inflammation. Inflammation is when your body produces stressing things inside your blood, right? Let's just call it like that. And they also disrupt the epithelial barrier. So the intestinal barriers, where should one thing be inside your gut? They disrupt it, they make it leaky. So the bad bacteria can even go into your small small intestine, that's why we call it SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and they make that leaky. And they make all these inflammatory processes with the omega-6 from the seed oils, with the sugar, it's also purely inflammatory for your arteries and for your gut. So that's kind of the, the first most important thing you have to do. You have to promise me something for tonight. Do it for your kids or do it for your cat. It doesn't matter for who you do it, but please do it for them. Cut out the processed food. It only takes 14 days to feel like a superhuman. You will feel like X-Men. You have no idea how much energy we will have. It's crazy. Cut out the bullshit. That's the hardest part, honestly. The next things I talk to you, they will be super easy. They are super easy hacks and chilly things you can do just to 
immediately improve your gut. It's very, very simple. So what is the first step? The first step after you cut out all this bullshit is you need to remove the bad bacteria because your belly, your gut, in a very simple layman terms, you have the bad bacteria and you have the good bacteria and you need to have a lot of good bacteria and very little bad bacteria. And then everything is good because this is a symbiotic system because if you have a lot of bad bacteria, then bad things happen because the bad bacteria, then it's also possible that candida albicans, you know about candida, then the candida can grow. And then if the candida can grow, then the mold can grow. And like, it's like this, this devilish circle and it keeps getting worse. So you need to kill off the bad bacteria first. And that's always the first thing. Do not start with the probiotics. The probiotics, the good bacteria, the fiber, you can add them. Yes, they're great, but they're later. We will talk about them in a little bit. What is the real truth there? Not everything is the same, right? But first we need to remove the bad bacteria. So we're removing the bad bacteria now. And how do we remove the bad bacteria? We take the ginger. The ginger is for anti-inflammatory purposes. You can crush it, you can chew it, you can put it in a smoothie, you can spice with it, everything with it. Ginger is your gut healing herb. The Greeks used it. I'm living in Cyprus right now and man, everybody here loves the ginger. The Greeks love the ginger, the Cypriots love the ginger. It even looks like the stomach for God's sake. So take some ginger, it's great. That's the first thing you have to do. You promise me, take the ginger. Drink your lemon water in the morning. The lemon water in the morning will remove the toxins from the liver, will improve the metabolism and will help your body detox, alkalize it. So the lemon water is the second most important thing. Take some notes for these important things. We have the ginger, we have the lemon water. Oh, we have the grapefruit seed extract. The grapefruit seed extract extract. What does grapefruit seed extract actually do? Grapefruit seed extract contains the naringene and the grapefruits, you have to know they, co they contain these, um, it contains the substance called naringene. And naringene and the grapefruits itself, it was discovered by this doctor that accidentally developed grapefruit extract and he found that it was extremely antifungal, antibacterial, anti- Candida, it killed all antiparasitic as well. By the way, fun fact, you can kill parasites. I can. I cannot give you any recommendations. This is not medical advice. I can kill my parasites with some grape seed extract. It's part of my protocol, of one of the protocols. So, long story short, grape seed extract is a great remedy to remove the bad bacteria. And one cool thing you will notice once you finish the second step, as a little spoiler, once you finish, you will not have bad breath anymore because bad breath, we call it the wrong name. It's not bad breath, it's bad gut. Your breath doesn't smell bad because of your mouth. Your breath smells bad because of your gut. People that drink bad things all the time, people that drink too much coffee, they're too acidic and they eat shitty processed food, they always have a smelly breath. You can brush your teeth 20 times and it will still smell because it's a rotting gut that's smelling from the inside out. It's not fat, it's toxins. It's not bad breath, it's the bad gut. Everything is the gut. It's not, sometimes, it's not depression anxiety. Sometimes it's the gut. So take care of your gut. What else can we do to kill all the bad bacteria? Cluster salts. And how do we get the cluster salts? For free, from cheap, from nature, with the celery. Smooth the celery. Make a smoothie with the celery. Here's the recipe list to detox your gut. Celery, lemon, raw honey. I don't know if I can even recommend raw honey. I don't know if it's legal. Check me if it's not or leave a comment. I don't know. I hope it is because raw honey is great. I will talk more about the honey conspiracy, but that's another topic for another day. Then we add the cilantro. This detoxes some heavy metals from the gut. Always a great thing. Always add some cilantro into your food. That's why the ancient cuisines always use the cilantro, right? Spirulina chlorella, you know, I always like the chlorophylls. The chlorophylls make us healthy, work as antioxidants. And then for the gut, add some red beet. And that's your basic primary detox shake. And this shake will get rid of the bad bacteria, right? So that's the first step. Kill off the bad bacteria. Now, the next step, and now we have like two ways to go forward, right? Like we just remove the inflammation with the ginger, with the antioxidant foods, and we remove the bad bacteria with the grapeseed extract. And now we need to build up the intestinal layer again. Your intestine needs to be protected. We mostly have it leaking. I told you the barriers, the intestinal motility, it's disrupted. We need to make it strong again. We need to build that wall, right? And we do this with herbs, one of the favorite herbs that I use for that is the, no, this is the wormwood, this is what I use against the heavy metals, and I believe this one should be my slippery elm bark. Also the burdock root that Dr. CB popularized, those are the greatest herbs you can use to rebuild your intestinal gut layer. So that is one of the herbs you can use it as an extract, you can make yourself a tea out of it. Slippery elm bark is what I would be using to recover my intestinal layer and rebuild that mucosa it's really 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 potent i love it for doing that then what i also add and the good bacteria will be later part first we need to build up that layer the next one we add is the psyllium husk 
psyllium husk and or flaxseed and or linseed. What the psyllium husk does, it's one of the soluble fibers and this will serve as a fodder to kind of make good bacteria eat more because, and here's a little fun fact, side story, you are not craving food. The bacteria inside your gut are craving the food, right? Like it's not your brain, it's the bacteria's brain. You have 10 times more bacterial cells than you have human cells. And these bacteria that tell you, oh, Fabian, you need to eat more sugar, you need to eat more sugar, I wanna eat sugar. Or Fabian, eat more chips, eat more fries, eat more Oreos, eat more cookies. And like these bacteria, they tell your brain, it's a gut brain axis, they tell your brain you need to eat this. Like it's not you that is, that is stupid eating this, it's actually your bacteria, your gut. So if you change this and if you give, if you feed the good bacteria, then the good bacteria will tell me, Fabian, and give me good food. Fabian, you like celery, eat celery, eat raw carrots, it's great. And here we have one little secret that I showed you, raw carrots. Dr. Ray Pete. If you don't know this man, this is one of my biggest role models, you could say. I love him. He was a little bit anti-system, which is also something that identifies with me. He was just a cool guy. And so this Dr. Ray Pete, he found out that raw carrots detox endotoxins from your gut via their fiber. And they're specific in that. It only works with the raw carrots. So you take a bowl of raw carrots in the morning together with your eggs, which is the perfect breakfast. Add some apple cider vinegar, add some salt, add some honey, add some pepper. That's the best breakfast you can give your body in the whole world. I will stand with this to death. That's the best breakfast you can eat. So you eat this breakfast and this removes excess estrogens. We all know that we are being poisoned with phthalates and with plastics and all these microplastics shit. So the phthalates can also go out, but that's a topic for another day. And the estrogens, we're talking about the endotoxin from the gut and the raw carrots can tox that out and also rebuild the mucosal layer. So eat your raw carrots every day. So we have the psyllium husk, which feeds the good bacteria. And then we can also eat more things that feed the good bacteria. What are great things that feed the good bacteria? That can be green apples. Granny Smith apples are fantastic. The fibers in the Granny Smith apples, the citrus pectin, it's great. You can eat the lemon peels, great fiber for the gut. You can do not eat things like kidney beans, like oats. They're all bad fibers. They make you bloated. They're insoluble fibers. They have too much anti-nutrients. They're not good. Throw away the oats, throw away the kidney beans. Eat the apple, eat the citrus pectins, eat these things. If you want to know everything, by the way, soon I'm going to release a book with everything I know. This is so if I get deported, if they remove me, which I suspect is happening soon, then you have this book. This book is everything that I that I stand for. So nevertheless, and then we have the probiotics. That's, that's kind of the last thing you can do, right? The, the probiotics. You know the isolated probiotic supplements? Yeah, you can use them. I won't talk much about them. I'm officially not allowed to. So, but I'm a big friend of eating the foods. So eating the sauerkraut, eating the kimchi, eating the fermented foods, eating the fermented fruits, eating the fermented herbs, eating the pickled things, eating the everything that's kind of smelly rotting, like the kefir is great, the, the, the parmigiano reggiano is great. All these foods, they directly contain the good bacteria. But you remember, this is the last, 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 last step, right? We did a lot of steps beforehand. First of all, we removed all the bullshit that poisoned you in the first place, that made you sick. Then we remove the bad bacteria, we move the inflammation, then we rebuild the layer, then we some feed the good bacteria, and then we add the good bacteria, the last, last. And if you start with the good bacteria and you have all the fucked up, oh boy, you're gonna get so many issues. There's gonna be candida growing everywhere. The good bacteria and the bad bacteria, they're gonna be competing. It's gonna be a mess. So that's not what I would be doing. First, we get rid of them, then we build them up again. That's the real way that I healed my gut. And what did I do when I healed my gut? I also healed my allergies, I healed my eczema, I healed my rashes, I healed my brain fog. It pretty much changed my life forever. That's why I will never stop talking about the gut. That's why I will never stop talking about the right way to eat to heal your gut. I have a whole video about the diet that I'm following and this diet directly heals or protects, I cannot talk healing, that really protects and is great for the gut. So if you're curious, learn more, follow the channel now. This is your time to wake the fuck up and follow me for more.